So I'll be honest, this show is actually just WTF. That should be on the box art, just WTF. Now, if you can't tell, my throat is dying. It actually feels like knives are being ripped down my vocal cords, so... My voice sounds weird, if my energy seems low, just know, like, that's the best you get. But in all honesty, I didn't see a single person last week think that they didn't lose. Because it looked like their key got stolen. The fact that they come into this episode with, like, the counting, I'm like, what the hell are they doing? They're gonna, like, use a bomb? But, like, what would that get? The alarm already went off. You can't, like, steal the the thing. Like, if the bells already rang, I doubt that's gonna be allowed. The fact that it's revealed that they modified the bell so that it would go off because they knew they'd try something. So whatever they did try, it would then give them a couple more minutes to undo what they did and the fact that they get the W. The unfortunate thing is they still have to get all the keys, which is something I didn't realize, but it's such an unexpected twist because the past three episodes, including this one, between like six, seven, and eight, are just like pulling the rug from under your feet and making you say, what the hell? To the point of being like, that's the craziest plot twist. I think many of us agreed last week was the craziest plot twist, but this episode once again steals the crown. Because the thing is, is that it's not even just what they did with the victory, it's the seemingly what they were establishing as a death moment. So this kid who looks like Minota from My Hero Academia, if he was well written, basically is a character that is unlike anyone we've experienced. Now, there's been a few characters that seemingly don't hate dusters to the same degree as the others. The person who went into Hibiki's room who tried to let, you know, this girl escape. We have obviously the real Hibiki. So the idea that there's a lot of people who maybe don't have the same level of hatred as others is interesting. But when he pushes that girl into the elevator and then get blasted, they're making you think he's not going to make it. It's just unexpected after unexpected without feeling like it's trying to one-up itself and I honestly have to give a round of applause because I can't talk that loud so that's the best you're gonna get. Now I do have full live reactions to all these episodes of Go Go Loser Ranger over on my Patreon if you want to see my full look at thought to this or any of these episodes it's gonna be over there exclusively. So let me just say with how I'm currently feeling if the shows weren't as good as they are on Sundays you wouldn't see Brandon today. Brandon would be sleeping 24 hours. But I got up extra early because, of one, I, I couldn't stop coughing, and two, the shows are just that good. And to witness what they've accomplished, and it's kind of weird because I've been hyping this show up since episode one. But it is interesting when you look at, in a lot of shows cases, when you get to the second half of a season, like when it comes to like a 24 episode run, yeah, the show definitely starts to change. It has like a new direction, a new territory, but it's not often that like a 12 episode season does that in the middle portion to the point that it feels like a completely different anime and that's a good thing. The first half of this season with him as a duster trying to go against the rangers but not infiltrating their base was amazing content. It was different, it was like WWE meets Power Rangers and we didn't know who we could trust and that was all well and good. But the infiltration stuff of him taking up Hibiki's identity has elevated this show like two or three notches. I think this show is a pretty great show prior to him taking on Hibiki's identity. I think this show is amazing at this point. I remember before the season started there was rumors that it could be a split core and I really hope that's the case because I don't think whatever they're gonna... If we end with them in official ranger position and we really start to see new connections form, we have this boss that is running amok and honestly had he not cut his arm off we would have lost our boy guaranteed right then and there it's just wild to experience what they've been able to do now the thing is is we know people can take up identities and he got mighty messed up so as far as we know that girl who's been kept in the closet took up his identity and is fighting for d and them completely possible right now but the idea that this show is just so good at using that unexpected nature without making it feel like it's trying to do plot twists. What it more feels like Go Go Loser Ranger is doing is it's trying to say, if you're going to have a world as corrupt and twisted as this, things are going to be constantly sweeping you off your feet in ways that you don't see coming. The idea of what they accomplished at the start of this episode was something that everyone walked in thinking, okay, we lost today, but day three, that's our chance to fix everything. And then we get that W. 
and then we kind of let our guard down because we got the W. And then we see characters get blasted. We see, the, we see these crazy moves where characters are doing things and sacrificing things seemingly in ways you just don't expect. And then they continuously sweep you off your feet. The thing I'm most interested in out of anything with this show long term is what actually happens with the personalities who don't completely agree that all dusters are evil. Because as we've seen, quite a few, for how many characters we've met, have been more okay with lending a friendly hand to a duster. Now, the idea that this man, who honestly I felt pretty bad for at the end, he's been living a life being told you're crazy, your brother was weak, and he died to a, to a pathetic loser of a duster. There's no history of bosses coming up. But very clearly, the boss is who killed his brother. And the idea that, you know, you go from thinking, okay, this dude's just a big D-bag, to like, maybe we could actually recruit him over to our side and let him get that revenge he deserves. It's just, there's so much we don't know. At the end of the day, we know there's a lot of lies, a lot of secrets from the, the main rangers. And this is all for show. This is all for profit. But there's a lot they're keeping from the general public. And it's going to be interesting to see how D and them are going to expose more and more and what the end game of this show would actually be. Because what's starting off as him saying, I'm going to finish the mission, is quickly becoming that he's learning that what it is to be human. The idea that, like, oh, this guy's an idiot. If he would have just, you know, kept the key for himself or didn't help others, he would have been set. But instead, he's working with us. He's the perfect teammate, but he's a loser. At the end of the day... As much as he wants to call people like that losers, his characterization is going to turn him into what he thinks is a loser, but in actuality, is turning him more into a person. Now, obviously, I'm loving this show. It's a shame that we're closer to the end of for the first core, but hopefully we won't have too long for a second core, aka second season, whatever the studio's going to end up calling it. I definitely think it's uh, crazy that each episode they can double whammy us, even though the previous episode double whammied us, and the episode before that double whammy us. Also, I just wanted to add, I've already complimented how cool these lightsaber plasma pistol duo combos are, but the fact that they can remove a limitator and like turn it into a volcanic eruption is just making these devices even cooler and once again, Star Wars ain't got shit. I don't know what to actually expect with this final event, but um, this was pretty crazy. Let me know what you thought down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you know if I want to upload more and like a match, we got those full live reactions over on Patreon and hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. So today, we have Jacob McCarthy, Maya, Tama, and Divine Tank 00. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care, and y'all have a good one.